everyone. I know it's been a hot minute since I talked about card game anime, which is interesting because uh, card game anime is kind of what I'm most known for around here. But, well, uh, someone brought up, just flat out asked me in a comment section, like, oh, uh, when are you going to talk about Shadow vs. Flame again? So I'm like, yeah, let's talk about Shadow vs. Flame again. Been a hot minute since we did that. And, you know, let's uh, let's, let's talk about Carfight Vanguard Divine Z because I've been keeping up with that. And then we'll keep up with Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. And I don't want to watch that, but we'll fucking do it. Anyways, cause fuck, we're here. We're talking about card game anime, damn it. Yeah, we're just going to do, like, three in a row, like, just kind of nice, just sort of simple discussion videos about the big three card game anime. Kind of talk about which are better, which are not so great, what's working, what's not working, and maybe... Uh, well, we kind of wonder what's going on in the future. We'll, we'll see. Uh, first and foremost, though, let us talk about Shadow vs. Flame. So, for those of you who don't remember, I love this show. It is great. I adore the characters. I, I love the drama they go on. Just everything about this show is great. Except... I have been saying for a while now that with how the show throws its uh, plot into the garbage to focus on the character drama, I always had this feeling when the plot became the main thing, it was not going to work. And while I am happy to say that there is still a lot I like because I like this show, it's better than say your average card fight Vanguard Divine Z episode. Um, yeah, you definitely feel the quality drop in the writing and the pacing and the presentation. So, uh, let's just kind of go through every, uh, all the big fights, because that's kind of all we're doing right now. Uh, the, the character stuff is over, I guess, unfortunately, and, uh, let's, let's kind of see what we can make of all this, shall we? Uh, so first and foremost, we have, uh, the first fight we go through which is this new bad guy, Erde, I don't care. They're just more generic AI bad guys. We're seeing in just fucking everything and they're all the same. And they, they all are just like, they're treated like the most unique thing in the world. When no, we're getting these stupid AI bad guys and everything. Please do something different with them. But yeah, so it's him versus Itsuki and Subaru. And there's just not a lot happening here. Uh, Erde just spouts the generic bullcrap about humanity's gotta go and be replaced by the AI or whatever the fuck. And Itsuki and Subaru, their arcs are pretty much over, so they don't really have anything to grow from in this fight except just spout their their um, Saturday afternoon special speeches about character growth and all that. And there's just not a lot going on here. Um, at one point the bad guy is like, oh, you'll feel the pain in real life or whatever. And they don't do a lot with it. Both guys just basically look like they just got kicked in the gut really hard, which isn't that exciting when you're trying to build your big final stakes. I will say I like that Itsuki was allowed to kind of like be the one to end the fight since, you know, he obviously has grown a lot as a character and all that. So it was nice to see, but all in all, pretty pointless, um, in my opinion. Uh, so then we have our next fight, which is, I will say this is probably the best one. And that is Andrea and Hina versus Subasa and Ren. Uh, as many of you may know, I think the three main girls of this show are incredible characters. And I like these two antagonists. Um, I kind of didn't think they'd actually go the actual bad guy route. And here's the best part. The show doesn't seem to care that they did this either. Yeah, so the big sort of problem here is I don't really understand what either of these two are really after. In particular, making it that uh, Andrea is the like leader of this weird cult that was brought up like two, three times over the span of 90 some odd episodes really feels weak and not very interesting. However, what I will say is interesting here is sort of the idea that the show kind of treats it like, yeah, you're not going to care or understand what these two really want, but it's almost like they don't really know what they want, that this isn't about goals. This isn't about a big evil plan. These are two women 
who their entire lives have been nothing but pain and anger and frustration and an inability to really find anyone they can connect to besides each other, which sounds really nice, except it almost kind of feels like they've enabled each other. They've pushed each other farther into the realm of anger and want for like just revenge against the whole world. And I think that's really strong when you see like Hina's parents basically just replaced her with her brother or whatever. And you just see the anger in her face and you see like how Andrea is almost like enjoying giving into this darkness. It's very good stuff. And most importantly, Ren and Subasa never stop believing that they can reach them, that they see the humanity buried under all this darkness and they always want to try and find it. And I sort of think it's interesting by the end of the fight, the two sort of like acknowledge that that is still in them, that their humanity is not gone, but they've become so accustomed to living in a world of self pity and anger. They don't know how to get out of it. They don't feel like there's any room for them left in the regular world. And so when the giant hole that randomly shows up in the ground in a middle of an urban area throws them into the pit of doom, I kind of get what they're trying to say. I also 100% believe these two will be back by the end and they'll be like, fine. I mean, what do they do? Land in a sore and they're just sitting in like a shit pile or something? Um... But yeah, that was like the best these episodes get. Also, I know someone out there is going to be happy about the idea of them in a shit pile. I know you fucking perverts. Uh, and then we get the next thing that happens, which is Subasa imagines the four of them on a group date. One of them is their teacher. And then she imagines her teacher kind of flirting with her. I don't know what that was about. That was weird. But yeah, just sort of like, from there, we just get back to the fights. We don't have a lot of time for character stuff right now. So we move on to our next big fight. Uh, the next generic bad guy, Himmel versus Ryuga and Mikado. And it's just kind of the same thing as the other one. It's a boring generic discussion with a characterless AI where they just kind of reiterate their stuff they've already gone through. I will say this one's more fun because these are two characters. It's just fun to see them interact, but... You know, not a lot really happens here. It just sort of goes and then it's over and they win because they have to because we got to get to that. So, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that. Uh, next, we move on to I do kind of like the way they break up just the generic fights against the big three. Um, but again, when you're relegating main characters to just taking on side bad guys, it's a little weird. Uh, so then next we have what should be my favorite fight because all of her stuff has been my favorite things about the show so far. And that is Warden Craft versus Shion. We're going to game three. And like, I mean, like his big crazy form is cool looking. And again, there is nice character beats for Shion in here. I like sort of the way she has to literally say goodbye to gentlemen and move on with her life. But it felt like we reiterated and retread a lot of ground and like repeated a lot of the same dialogue. And it's kind of weird because the way the show treats it is he's sort of like, oh, well, I told you this already, but I'm going to tell you again. And like, she's like, well, I know I went through all this, but I'm going to go through it again. And it's just kind of like, this only happened yesterday. <laughs> it's not like it's really that big a deal. And like, again, I get the idea of sort of like, you know, the last time we saw Shion, it was sort of like Ren and Subasa were like, even if you are a loner and even if like you'll have trouble socializing, we're still here for you and we'll always be there for you. And Xion found peace in that. So it's sort of like the resolution is Xion can have moments where she stands by herself and she can have moments where she doesn't need to hide behind gentlemen. She can be who she is, but I just kind of wish it felt more earned instead of just repeating everything again. Also, I want to point this out for a minute. Six out of seven shadows were basically traitors. This guy turned out to be a traitor. 
Wolfman, as we'll talk about in a minute, is a traitor. The two chicks are traitors. And also, the only reason Hero and Luca, or Lucio, whatever you want to call him, the only reason they were here was to get close enough to the Ark to destroy it. That is bad hiring. Someone call this company's HR department and fire them. So yeah, and then we move on to our big fight, which is Light versus Ark Ruler. And oh my god, <laughs> this went on so fucking long. I've obviously, if you couldn't tell, have the wiki in front of me just to like keep track of all this shit. It's so long. It's so fucking long. And the problem is like, it's not really filled with a lot of interesting shit. Like a lot of it is just what we've been hearing over and over again at this point. Yeah, there's some interesting little stuff. Like I like how Arc Ruler tries to like go through a fine tooth cone with everything with light and just dissect everything and take the meaning out of everything. But there's not as much of those scenes as I need. And light's response is just always his typical, like I stand by my belief in the good of humanity and my friends and all that. And again, I think a lot of that stuff can be done very well, but in a fight that feels this dragged out in a arc that feels this dragged out, it doesn't have the strength. I think it really needs to, to really feel that wholly unique. Again, there's just so many evil AI stories right now, and they all think they're so unique and different, but in reality, they're just doing the same thing. And I know like AI is becoming a part of our everyday lives, and we're all obviously worried about what that's going to lead to, but you can't just keep repeating the same black mirror crap over and over again into what feels like every fucking show and movie now. It's just kind of the same thing. Look, I hate how my hentai is being ruined by AI art as much as the next guy, but there's got to be a more creative way to talk about it than this. And so then we move on to where we're currently at, which is the big revelation that feels like it comes fucking out of nowhere and is so fucking sudden. Arc Ruler's cut from his own final monologue to Wolfman shows up. Felt like the actor being genuinely confused as to what's happening. And so yeah, we find out Wolfman is our big baddie. He's doing this because he's a snobby rich British person who thinks he knows what's right for the world. And I mean, again, with more development and more time, like you could probably do something here, but it's so rushed. It's the, it's the bad guy from card fight Vanguard G thing where like he's seen the suffering of the world and believes by any means necessary, he can do something about it. And he's going to use evil card game magic to go up against it. Light then of course fights him. I do like that light loses. I think Wolfman sort of talk about fate and predetermined roles and what light's role and everything has been and how it was sort of like taken from him and how that has sort of like set him on the path he's on now. I think again, there is something interesting somewhere in here, but this is just not really how you do it. Like you really need more time with Wolfman as a person to, or Wolfram, however you fuck. I don't care. <laughs> however, you need more time to just be in his head and understand how he got here and build that up over time, not just big expo dumps because you were probably, because the staff was probably told early on, this guy's got to be your big final baddie. And then they forgot about it for like two actual in re real time years. So yeah, that's where we're currently at now. I like that light lost. I like that light understands the gravity of losing this fight and what it means to the world. The stakes don't feel well established. Uh, having everyone just scream, please save us, 14-year-old boy, you can do it, feels very much like the children of Japan always yelling to Ultraman to save them. Um, The big strength here, and this is the note I choose to end on, because contrary to what everything I've said is, I do love this show, and my criticism comes from love and knowing it can be so much better. I really like the way we end right before Light jumps into the portal for the final battle. I did not intend to actually have this video come out at a nice sort of like um, stopping point. Obviously, we're going to continue on Wednesday. Why are episodes coming out twice a week? I'm having so much trouble keeping up with anime right now as is. Um, but I like that note it ends on of Ren forces Light to acknowledge he is afraid. 
He's scared. The weight of the world on his shoulders is not easy and he can't handle it all because he's a teenager. He's a kid. He wouldn't be able to. But in acknowledging that this is not easy and he is afraid, that's where his strength comes from. That his ability to push forward comes from the fact that he has this group of amazing friends who understand that this is how he feels, who understand what it means to go through this fight and who care about him and who value him and love him so much that it gives light the strength. We often mock the power of friendship in anime, but I feel like that's because a lot of stories don't put the legwork in to making the power of friendship feel special. But for all my complaining and for the kind of dip in quality the show is going through, I think it's a testament to how great it really is that when everyone tells Light how much they care and they believe in him and how even though they're afraid for him, they will stand by him no matter what, it does feel special and beautiful and it is great to see. And even if this show is not going to be this incredible masterpiece, even if it has flaws and problems that all showed up at the end, I am genuinely excited to see how this finale goes and I am happy to see where these characters I've come to love are headed. So yeah, that has been the last like 20 some odd episodes of Shadow vs. Flame. Has it been perfect? No. Am I still in it to the end for these characters that I love? Hell fucking yeah. And again, I still think this is doing a lot more better than the other two card game animes. So yeah, in the comment section below, give me your thoughts on Shadow vs. Flame. I know this went pretty long, but hey, everything I'm doing seems to be going long lately. So yeah, give me your thoughts about that below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me as we talk about Card Fight Vanguard next. Hopefully, going to try and get that out really quickly. And then we'll talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Hopefully, we can get through those episodes and get that out at a timely manner. So yeah, click to like, click subscribe, and join me for all that in the comments.